Hi, in this video I want to explain the dosages of lithium orotate that you would use compared to the dosages of lithium carbonate that people typically use. It's actually quite a source of confusion. I use lithium orotate myself. I take 10 milligrams of lithium from lithium orotate a day because I have bipolar disorder. As you probably already know, lithium carbonate is used at high doses to treat bipolar disorder and chronic depression. A typical dose of lithium carbonate for bipolar disorder might be 900 milligrams or 1,200 milligrams. But that's the weight of the entire molecule of lithium plus the carbonate. In, a in 900 milligrams of lithium carbonate, there's only 170 milligrams of actual lithium. In 1,200 milligrams of lithium carbonate, there's only 225 milligrams of lithium. Lithium orotate, on the other hand, contains a smaller percentage of lithium. So I take 260 milligrams of lithium orotate per day, which delivers 10 milligrams of lithium. It would be helpful if everybody from doctors and pharmacists through to supplement manufacturers used a standard way of writing down the weight of the lithium in whatever medicine they're using. But unfortunately they don't. So doctors and pharmacists write a prescription saying lithium when they're giving the weight of the lithium carbonate, so you get a high number like 900, whereas a lot of supplement manufacturers will put in their bottle just the weight of the lithium, so they get a much smaller number, you know, five or 10 milligrams over here, whereas over here could be 900 or 1,000, 1,200 milligrams. The real numbers would break down like this. You might be taking 170 milligrams of lithium from carbonate for bipolar, whereas from orotate you might take 10. It's still a big difference. It's 1 17th or about 6% of, of the dosage. Another thing that can be confusing is that the supplement manufacturers of lithium orotate don't always use the same standardized system on the label to indicate how much lithium is in the product. Let me show you what I mean. On this label, the manufacturer says lithium orotate 5 milligrams. Well, that actually contains 130 milligrams of lithium orotate delivering five milligrams of elemental lithium. This manufacturer puts on the front of their label lithium orotate 120 milligrams, and this contains 4.6 milligrams of elemental lithium. Now, I am gonna tell you what I typically recommend in my practice for dosages of lithium orotate, but I just have to give you a warning here and a declaration here. Obviously, I don't know everyone who's watching this video, I don't know that it's appropriate or safe for you to take lithium orotate in place of some other medicines that you're taking. So please don't suddenly transition off your lithium carbonate or other mood stabilizing drugs thinking that, well, I'll just take low dose lithium orotate because it has less side effects or no side effects and it's safer and uh, this is gonna replace the current medicines I'm taking. Do not under any circumstances Give up any medicines that you need to keep you safe and stable without proper supervision. Having now said that, if your goal is to just look after your brain, to keep it healthy and slow down the aging process, keep it in peak condition, then I would recommend a typical dosage of two and a half to five milligrams. If your goal is to upregulate or promote and boost your neuroplasticity, perhaps to recover from a brain injury, perhaps you're suffering from cognitive decline or some memory decline, perhaps you're wanting to boost your neuroplasticity to accelerate your recovery from drug withdrawal, whether it be prescription drugs such as benzos or recreational drugs, then I typically recommend a dosage of between five to 10 milligrams of lithium from lithium oil. If, however, you have bipolar disorder or chronic depression, I'm typically recommending doses between 10 milligrams to 15. For short periods of time, I'm very happy to go to 20. I think that's completely safe. There are practitioners in the US that routinely prescribe much higher doses, as high as 40 milligrams of lithium from lithium orotate per day on an ongoing long-term basis. They swear that they have never seen any toxic side effects, and I am inclined to believe them. I'm just ultra cautious about putting anything toxic into my own body or recommending that my patients do the same. So I usually don't go above 20 milligrams on a long-term basis. 
And actually, I don't find I need to take more than 20 milligrams or recommend more than 20 because I combine the low-dose lithium orotate with additional supportive remedies that reinforce its actions. Now, while we're here, we might as well look at some important questions. Lithium is absolutely great stuff for the brain, promotes plasticity, and it has multiple literally quite wonderful therapeutic effects on the bipolar brain. And lithium is not actually a drug or a medicine just for the brain and just for the bipolar brain. Lithium is in fact an essential nutrient. It's required for the health of the spleen, the immune system, the reproductive system, and the brain. Animal studies have shown chronic lithium deficiency leads to the breakdown of those systems in the body. And there's been a correlation made in human studies between the amount of lithium in the diet, mainly it comes from drinking water and grains, and mental health. Most notably, in areas where there's more lithium in the drinking water, there's a significantly diminished level of suicide. So lithium is not a drug and it's not a toxic metal that we want to avoid. It's not something that we may think of as having well some benefits and I'm, I might have to take it but I'd really rather not and I want to take the minimal amount and reduce the side effects. It just turns out, uh, the psychiatric medicine discovered, if you take high doses of the carbonate salt of lithium it has a therapeutic effect on bipolar disorder and chronic depression. All the thinking and impression that you probably have of lithium as a rather toxic substance comes from the fact that it's used in psychiatric medicine at these high doses. But any of the nutritional minerals could become toxic when taken at high enough doses. Zinc, for example, has a recommended daily intake of 15 milligrams a day. I often prescribe people double that, sometimes treble that. But if I suggested to somebody to take 17 times or more the recommended daily allowance, then you would be actually taking toxic levels of zinc, in fact, more toxic than the lithium. The problem with using lithium carbonate is that in order to deliver enough of the lithium from a carbonate source into the cells of the brain, you have to take such a high dose to push it into those cells that you're bouncing up against the toxic level. There's a very narrow margin between the therapeutic dose from lithium carbonate and the actual toxic dose. And it's not toxic to the brain, it's toxic to the thyroid and to the kidneys. It appears that lithium orotate delivers lithium to the cells of the brain where we want it more efficiently than lithium carbonate. So we don't need to be taking such a high dose in, in the whole body, in the whole systemic blood, pushing it into the cells of the brain, and thereby with that high dose, risking kidney toxicity and thyroid toxicity. Now, something we need to be clear on is that there is scant little research on lithium orotate. There's quite a lot of research on lithium carbonate and not very much on lithium orotate. Why should that be? Well, I think it's just purely historical. Decades ago, when it was discovered that lithium could be useful for the bipolar brain and certain psychiatric conditions, they just randomly picked lithium carbonate and also lithium citrate to do the research on. Today, medicinal lithium is a cheap and unpatentable substance. In the US, you could buy 200 capsules for about $15. So unfortunately, it's too late. Nobody's ever gonna research lithium orotate. Sometimes people say to me, if lithium orotate, oh, and some of the other herbal and natural medicines you use are so effective, why isn't there more research into them? To which I say, you've got that question the wrong way around. If you can't recuperate your money by patenting a substance, why would anybody research lithium orotate or other natural substances? I think it's such a shame. We're really stuck with this situation. I feel huge benefits myself from the lithium orotate. Many of my patients feel benefits from the lithium orotate. None of us suffer from the toxic side effects. If you want to go and read some of this for yourself, go on the US Amazon, amazon.com. Look up lithium orotate, click on the various products and look at the reviews. There are hundreds, I've never seen anything like it, hundreds of positive reviews. Now I've got a lot more information about 
about lithium and lithium orotate, the science of what we know about how lithium affects the brain, particularly the bipolar brain, but other conditions as well. And also my personal experience of how I began with lithium and what I experienced with it in treating and overcoming and stabilizing my own bipolar condition. Also information on how you would extract the maximum benefit from a low dose lithium orotate by combining it with other remedies. If you want that information, you could subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on the notifications bell. That way when I make those new videos and update those posts, you'll get a notification so you won't miss out. You can also go to my website, balancingbrainchemistry.co.uk and uh, check out my other social media. Bye for now.